Rahim. Dear students, welcome to the Electrical Engineering Channel. In this lecture, I will discuss speed control of DC motors. And from the previous lecture, we derived an expression for the speed of a DC motor, and that is equal to V minus I A R A divided by Z phi multiplied by A over P. And in this expression, uh, the terms A over Z P are constant. So that can be replaced uh, by k. So k is constant and rest will be V minus I A R A divided by phi. Here phi is the flux per pole and R A is the armature resistance and V is the applied voltage. So these three parameters flux, armature resistance and applied voltage can be used to control the speed of a DC motor. If we are using flux uh, as a controlling variable then that method will be called as flux control method. If we are using armature resistance, then that will be called as rheostat control. And if we are using V as the control variable for speed, then that will be called as a voltage control method. So first we will discuss flux control method. And the speed is inversely proportional to the magnetic flux. So we can use a variable resistor in series with the field winding. And we can vary this resistance to control the fuel current. If we increase this resistance, then the fuel current will decrease. And when fuel current decreases, the speed will increase, right? So this is a shunt bound DC generator. And IF is small, so field rheostat R is small. And I square R loss is also small. In DC shunt motors, this method is uh, favorable right because normally field current is small in DC shunt generators or shunt motors so I I square R loss across this resistor will also be small because IF is small in this case so when we increase this resistance field current will decrease and speed will increase and if we decrease this resistance field current will increase and speed will decrease so rheostat control method uh, is another method and here we can use a variable resistor in series with the armature windings and when we increase this resistance voltage drop uh, across the armature will increase right iara drop will increase and as a result uh, the speed will decrease right so when we increase this resistance iara will increase and speed will decrease uh, that is what we can observe in this figure. So when we don't use any variable, res any resistance over here, then only the inherent armature winding resistance will be present. So in that case, by increasing the armature current, the speed will decrease in this manner. When we increase this series resistance, then IARA drop will increase further. And then we will get such a profile over here for speed versus the armature current. Uh, in uh, voltage control method, we can use ward leonard system. So this system can be used to achieve variable DC voltage. And this is a motor uh, whose speed has to be controlled by varying the applied voltage. So the applied voltage can either be varied by using a variable DC supply but if we don't have a variable DC supply, then we can use a fixed DC supply. And that DC supply can be connected with the first motor M1. And that motor M1 is coupled to a generator, right? So when this motor rotates, it will rotate the generator shaft. And now we can change the excitation of this generator, right? So if we change the field current of this generator, we can change the output voltage or output induced EMF of this generator. And that output voltage can be used to control the speed of the second motor. So this is an expensive system. And uh, this system can be used to indirectly control the speed of uh, this motor by using this motor generator set, right? So that method is not uh, favorable and that is not recommended because in order to control the speed of one motor, you have to use two coupled DC machines. 
so the alternative method is uh, the use of a variable dc supply and just use that variable dc supply to control the speed of this motor and there is no need of using this motor generator set but this uh, system is called ward leonard system so speed control of series motor whatever we have discussed over here was about the dc shunt motors now we will discuss speed control of dc series motors and uh, in the flux control method we can use a field diverter and an armature diverter field diverter is a shunt variable resistor connected in parallel with the field winding and uh, by varying this resistance we can control the field current and when we vary the field current we can vary the speed of this dc series motor because when we increase the field current then uh, the flux increases and when flux increases the speed decreases so if we minimize this resistance then field current will be minimum right so when this resistance is minimum most of the current will be flowing through this path and the current through this field winding will be minimum and the flux will be minimum and the speed will be maximum similarly if we maximize this resistance this current will be minimum and this current will be maximum so flux will be maximum and speed will be minimum and this method is useful for achieving speed greater than the nominal speed the reason is that uh, we can uh, run this motor at the rated voltage suppose this series motor is designed for 100 volts dc and if we are applying 100 volts dc to this motor then we cannot further increase the applied voltage because 100 volt is the rated voltage of this dc machine so in this condition if we want to further increase the speed of this dc motor we can reduce the field current right so if we reduce this field current the speed of this dc motor will increase further so without increasing the applied voltage we can still increase the speed of this dc motor by playing with the field current of this motor so another method is called armature diverter and in this method we have to use a variable resistor in parallel with the armature winding and this method is useful for achieving speed smaller than the normal speed and in this method if we decrease this resistance then armature current through this winding will decrease because if we reduce this resistance most of the current will flow through this path and uh, the current through the armature will reduce but since we have applied a constant load mechanical load to this motor the armature of this motor will draw more current okay so it will draw more current from the supply which is connected at these terminals and uh, as a result uh, the field current will increase right so if the armature is supplying uh, a mechanical power to the load and it is drawing a 10 ampere current at that condition now if you reduce this resistance the armature current will reduce from 10 ampere to let's say 8 amperes but the motor load is constant mechanical load is constant so that armature must use 10 ampere current so it will draw more current from the applied voltage or connected supply so it will draw more current from the supply and uh, this current should be 10 ampere so as a result this field current will increase armature current will remain same 10 amperes but this field current will increase and when this field current increases the speed of the motor will decrease so that's why this method is useful for achieving speed smaller than the normal speed so as a result of our major diverter ia reduces in order to keep torque constant if will increase and speed will decrease another method is trapped field coil so we can use a variable um, tapping mechanism at the field winding of the dc series motor and we can change the inductance or number of turns of uh, this field winding by using a knob so if we are using more turns by moving this pointer to the left hand side then the flux will be maximum because more number of turns are included and uh, flux will be maximum and speed will reduce and if we move this pointer to the right hand side then less turns will be 
contributing to the flux and flux will be smaller and speed will increase paralleling field coils is uh, another method and uh, suppose we have four sets of field windings and we have four poles so since we have four poles then we will have four sets of the field windings one field winding for each pole and these four field windings can be connected either in series or parallel or in series parallel configuration like this so in this case the overall resistance or overall reactance of these field windings can be varied right so when we connect all these field windings in series the overall reactance of these windings will be maximum and field current will be minimum so when field current is minimum the speed will be maximum similarly in this case the reactance is slightly reduced so the field current will increase and speed will decrease and we can connect all these field windings in parallel so as a result uh, the reactance of the field winding will be minimum in that case and field current will be maximum and speed will be reduced further so there are three different speeds which can be achieved using this method so this is first method when all four windings are connected in series this is the second method in which two windings are connected in series and the combination is connected in parallel and the third way is all the four windings are connected in parallel so three different speeds can be achieved by this method so variable resistance method is another way of achieving variable speed of the motor armature right so in this case we can connect a variable resistor in series with the field winding and the armature winding so these are the two bindings which are already connected in series and this is a variable resistor which is connected in series with these two bindings and uh, with the, this uh, resistance we are actually varying the applied voltage right so when we increase uh, this resistance some voltage drop will be present over here and less voltage will be available across the motor so when the motor voltage is reduced its speed will also reduce and when we decrease or minimize this resistance maximum applied voltage will be available across the motor and the speed will be maximum so this is the curve without this variable resistance and this is the curve after the presence of this variable resistance so you can see the speed profile is reduced as compared to the no resistance case so by adding a rheostat voltage across the armature will reduce so speed will decrease so also large amount of power is wasted across the rheostat so in this case the armature current is high and all the armature current is flowing through this variable resistor so maximum power loss will be uh, present across this variable resistor so this method is actually not favorable because it is uh, causing excess amount of power loss in the motor now we will discuss the last method of uh, speed control of dc series motor and that is called series parallel control and in this method we can connect two series motors either in series or in parallel so this is one motor this is the second motor and they are connected in series and as a result the available voltage across each motor will be v by 2 so these are two like motors and uh, they are exactly identical electrically right the specifications of uh, this motor are exactly the same as those uh, for the second motor so half of the voltage will be available across this motor and half of the voltage will be available across this motor right so as a result since uh, the voltages are reduced so speed will be halved right because speed is proportional to eb over phi and that will be proportional to v by 2 multiplied by i so eb will be equal to v by 2 right so flux uh, is directly proportional to the field current so field current or armature current both are same so we have used i symbol over here so this is proportional to v by 2 y so if we talk about uh, the torque 
torque is proportional to flux multiplied by the current and flux is proportional to the current so torque is proportional to i square since same current is flowing through these two motors so there is no effect on the torque because torque is proportional to the currents and current is the same uh, and the torque will be the same so that will be proportional to i square so let's discuss the second case in which two series motors are connected in parallel and uh, as a result the current will be halved i by 2 current will be flowing through this motor and i by 2 current will be flowing through this motor and the applied voltage across both the motors uh, is v and here speed is proportional to v divided by i by 2 right because here it was v divided by i since current is halved so it will be v divided by i by 2 and it will become 2 v divided by i so it means speed has become double in this case and if we talk about the torque torque is proportional to phi times i since current is halved so it will be proportional to i by 2 square right actually torque is proportional to i square since current is half so now the torque will be proportional to i by 2 square so that will be proportional to i square by 4 so by this connection uh, the speed will be doubled and the torque will reduce four times so that is all about our today's lecture on speed control of dc shunt motors and dc series motors and i hope you have understood the basic concept of the speed control by different methods for both the motor types for watching more lectures please subscribe this channel until the next lecture it's goodbye